activist Comrade Fields on Thursday, January 16, 2020, took to social media to narrate how Chima Ikwanodo, a mechanic by profession, was arrested and touched to death by policemen in River State. Chima, according to the story shared by Fields, was in December 2019 arrested alongside four of his apprentices, identified as Victor Omunna, Ostaze Friday, Ifani Osuji, and Ifani Onyekwere. Chima and his apprentices were arrested for driving against traffic in the Port Harcourt area of Rivers, and he was allegedly tortured to death at Maiwan police station by policemen led by SP Benson Adetuyi. The deceased and his apprentices were reportedly test driving two cars when the police escorted them and allegedly framed them up for robbery. Plus TV Africa spoke to PPRO Rivers State Police Command, Namdi Omoni, to get his reactions. Well, as far as uh, that matter is concerned, it's being investigated. The CP has given the marking order to the men of this year, led by the Deputy Commissioner of Police, okay. to investigate the circumstances that led to the death of Chima and to bring anybody found complicit to justice. So that process is on, as at um, last week, autopsy was conducted. So at the end of it, all, there, there, will be, there will be police reports from the department that investigated the case, so that um, that would inform the CP the briefing with the press. But the, the CP will, at the end of the day, address the press on, on what happened in that uh, matter. The, uh, from the brief that we got from uh, the commander, they were arrested when they they were they they, they were running um, across the uh, traffic, and then they were suspected, taken to the station, interrogated and detained. You know, sometime in the course of the investigation, the one of them, Chima, died in custody, and the rest were charged to court. The four others were charged to court. So when the matter, when the family of uh, Rechima were sufficiently aggrieved and they took to social media, it attracted our attention and we invited the commander. He was even invited to even Abuja. And then the CP, after the his, uh, interview with the CP, the CP directed the, the, the commissioner of police to take over the matter and investigate. So that's where we are for now. The matter is being investigated. The commander has been redeployed. He's here at the headquarters. At the end of which, like I said earlier on, anybody, anybody found complicit will be dealt with according to law. Lord, I can assure you, the commission of police is one man that is transparent. And that's why what he's doing, he's doing it with ultimate transparency. So we just feel that people, the public should be calm and wait for the outcome of this investigation. It's one man that, that has zero tolerance for corruption. He has never hindered any of his officers. He has been to here last year, July, and between that time and now, some officers have been dismissed. Some are facing different uh, kinds of uh, punishments. So he's one man that is, um, is, 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 that is disciplined and applies discipline in all aspects of his uh, policing. So what we appeal again is that the public should remain calm and wait for what will happen in this case. Still on the matter, human rights activist, founder, social intervention and advocacy foundation, Shegu Awusaya, a popularly known popularly known rather as Shege Links, to weigh on the issues. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, you've been following the story, but before I go on to ask you all the questions, I want you a quick reaction to what the public relations officer of the police um, is saying, that the investigation is ongoing. Do you expect results? Yes, we're monitoring the results as usual. And um, it's just sad that our officers across board, across Nigeria, are acting like demons that find solace in slaughter. And this is because of the negligence of that sector for a long time. If we had not intervened in this matter, we wouldn't have been hearing a feedback from the system. Because if, as, when the thing happened, it happened last year, and until, until January, when they raised the alarm, when they contacted us, 
and we raised the alarm and we started holding them to account, we did not get any feedback from them. It was like a rumor. So, like what he's saying now is just an account of what was facilitated. Because it was when we raised the alarm that ACP Ishaku of Police CRE, that Complaint Response Unit, took up the matter and invited people to Abuja. And now we're getting the cooperation of the CP on this investigation. If not, Chima will have died in vain. So we don't want a situation where police will do this and then they will now wait for public outcry before they start holding themselves to account. They should be able to self-regulate. Police is not a criminal organization. They are supposed to be the solace of the people. Right. The, the story of his torture and death reads like a horror script, right? yet it may not be as unusual as a lot of persons might be thinking. What are your concerns with the seeming persistence of police brutality? I think it has become a culture of impunity. And the way to engage a culture is for all sides to realize the implication of their action on the future generation and our children. Police cannot remove themselves from society. They are part of society. And the very first thing that they ought to be doing right now is winning the trust of the people and building community relations. But this is not how it is done. We are seeing that within the system, there are still vestiges of, of Akuzu SARS abattoir operations of 2016, 2017, reoccurring again because of the laxity in the way in which this is being engaged. And that will, can only be blamed on the delay on, on of, of the police reform bill that has been uh, 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 delayed for over time by the legislature. So it is not a new thing, but we are, I believe that we have gone through this and we have been healing over time before this popped out uh, with the Eagle Crack team at uh, Mile One in Port Harcourt in River State. Um, you, you alluded earlier to the fact that the police don't seem to self-regulate. Um, more shocking, um, aside from the actual brutality, is the manner in which the police are trying to cover their tracks. Uh, first off, they charged the men arrested um, as being cultists, and a report in the Guardian newspaper said there was no evidence of a previous autopsy as claimed by the police on the cops. What do you think they were so, why, why rather do you think they were so bold to behave in such a way? It, to the police officers, you know that when, you are, when something has become a culture, you will not be able to help yourself from doing what you have always done when things happen like that. They are found to always have means to cover their tracks and within the system, because impunity is peer induced and peer reinforced, they will support themselves. Especially when there's no political will or a unity of the voice of the people coming together to hold them to account. So they often get away with this thing until now. So because of that, you can see that they, always, they, will, they will find themselves trying to lie or to use, to, in, to incriminate these people just to justify the crime that they have committed. But as God may have it, when organizations of refuge that understand how they operate get involved in this matter, they, they, they are often held to account to a point where police admit that a wrong has been done and investigation needs to be taken. There are so many things that were done that should not be recounted, that are not even print-worthy or media-worthy, because it rubs up on every single patriot within the police structure. And this is how we denigrate our institutions. It is bizarre, and it is something that shouldn't be happening in any civilization. Yeah, before I let you go, uh, Shege, is uh, this very last question for you. How optimistic are you that there will be justice in this particular matter? Well, as it is with all the cases that we have been monitoring and we have been intervening on, there will always be justice. No matter how long it takes, Tima will not die in vain. And by the grace of God also, in the next few weeks, 
you will be hearing the you will be uh, the public hearing of the police reform bill, which will eventually create a law that immediately makes all these aberrations a thing of the past. Thank you very much for your time with us this morning on the news. Thank you very much. All right, staying with that story still, we have in the studio with us Ekene Ezeji. She is a social commentator as well as a producer here at Plus TV Africa. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. What's your reaction to all of this? I was going to say it's not my pleasure when in the light of this particular story. Um, the the, let me start with the positives. At least um, Sega Links is looking forward to a bill that will be passed to curb this. So we're looking at more permanent interventions. The police report bill, he said, you know, repeatedly. So hopefully with that, you have a means of enforcing. It's not unusual to have, you know, police abuse power. It happens the world over. You hear of them, you know, in New York, you hear of them, you know, across the world. Anywhere you have power unchecked, people tend to abuse it. Um, so the problem we have is that there is no constraints on our police force, as with all our other, you know, instruments of, of enforcement. So now we're seeing how vital it is to actually constrain them and hold them accountable. Yeah. Some, some are saying that the, the brutality manifested in this case is exceptional. Yes, it you is know, a bit. How is it possible that, you know, officers that are supposed to protect, even if they need to touch a, I mean, is touch a still allowed in the first instance? It's, it's crazy, right? But I, again, when you say, I want us to put it in context. We do hear, you know, of torture going on in America. You know, there's certain islands where you hear of, I mean, they say, you know, they do waterboarding. So human beings are capable of that extreme extremities but of torture. But from the police that That's is what I'm saying. It, even it tends to happen that we are, I wish I could do a psychoanalysis of why it manifests in the very you know, areas where you have people who are meant to be. But it does. And I'm sure if people did a study, they'll find it's not unusual. The only thing that makes it slightly more, um, do you say, sinister in our case is there's no checking. There's no, there's no instrument of actually holding them accountable. That's why they were, like you said, you know, I, I heard your question, they were brazen to try and cover up their tracks because they knew they would act as one man. All of them, it's like a culture. And there's no way of shedding light on it and exposing the bad eggs. So the bad eggs seem to be the ones that we see sort of ruling the, the roost, so to speak. How do civilians in this case protect themselves from this kind of, you know, behavior from our officers going forward? Yes, I mean, it's frightening in a sense. I mean, the good thing we have is that we have um, NGOs like Sega Link, so we can immediately report. So we need to arm ourselves with numbers of such NGOs who are fighting on behalf of the people because he's directly involved in this case and that's what he's there for. So we arm ourselves with, you know, so everybody should go and Google, you know, Sega Link, get the number and have it to hand and be ready, you know, whether secretly to video these and, well, he's and have evidence. he's just one man as is. is with other NGOs. <laughs> yes. What, in, in, in your opinion, should the government be doing as a way to, you know, Re restructure the Nigerian police. The conversation about restructure seems to be reverberating everywhere. Mm. How can we put wow. that? I mean, there's a the lot police. on the table now, you know, with the community policing also being argued. Um, I think people would, I, it's not a defense, would say that a lot of these police people are living under very inhumane conditions because, you know, whether they're being paid or they're being paid very little, um, where they're even living, their living conditions are a little above, you know, what should be considered normal. So that might feed into the psyche and then they're working under the sun and being told to go and fend for themselves essentially and their family. So these may contribute to the mindset of the kind of people we find, you know, supposedly so maybe protecting us. So we need to look at their conditions, look at how to, you know, make it more humane. And then we need to now throw the light on them and make them accountable. Thank you very much, Ekene, for coming on the news. My pleasure.